Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of The Friday Review. Uh, we're coming to you live from sunny Mountain View, where the pollen is so thick in the air that there's a good chance I will choke right before the allergies kill me. <laughs> uh, my name's Rado Meyer. I'm uh, joined here in the studio today by uh, the, the ever-present Fred Chum and the uh, Hello. irrepressible... You're a redeemable. You are drunk, sir. Roman Yurik has, has come all the way down from San Francisco on the 101. How, this how was the drive this morning? I was on. A, I took a bus. Okay. So all right. Wow. I don't know how the drive. You was. got the license. That's a nice one. <laughs> so thank you for coming down and, uh, and joining us here. So uh, as as always, uh, we're going to try and review a bunch of apps today. Uh, we've got five on our list. Uh, we'll get through as many as we can. Anything we don't, uh, we will put at the top of the list. To check out next week. We hear every week, same time. 1 p.m. Pacific, which is I think 8 p.m. UTC, something like that. So, uh, so if there's uh, there's more apps you want to see, there'll be more apps uh, every week. So let's uh, let's kick off. Let's have a look at uh, at our first app for today. Um, I think we're going to have a look at uh, Heart Sounds and Murmurs, which was at the top of our list or at the bottom of our list last week. We didn't quite get enough time to uh, to look at. So I know Fred, you've you've checked out a few medical apps. If I'm having a heart attack and the first thing I do is grab my phone before I, uh, yeah, yeah, no, I call 911. I, yeah. I check this first, right? You check this. You go to Google Play and check it. So, Ooh. like like Rito said, the title of this app is Heart Sounds and Murmurs, and I would characterize it as a medical reference application. Um, let's have a look at uh, the tablet view here, Ian. Um, all right, great, thanks. Uh, let's launch the apps. This is the icon. Oh, it, flipped right into portrait mode. Um, so let's rotate the device back. All right, cool. So this this is a collection of sa different sound clips that represents different uh, um, heart conditions, abnormal heart conditions and murmurs. Uh, as you can see, we have a dark theme here, uh, which is very nice. It's got the hollow theme uh, with no the additional menu item down here, and uh, it's got an overflow menu up on the right, upper right-hand corner in the action bar, as you can see on screen. So it's a pretty simple, uh, no BS application. Uh, I, I would imagine it's got a pretty good uh, reference value for people in the industry, for, for, for medical professionals and or students. Mm -hmm. um, you, it shows you a bunch of sound clips. Oops, let's go back. And uh, you go through a bunch of them. A lot of these don't. I can't really tell the difference. But maybe you guys can. No, um, no, no. <laughs> no. Can I put a tell? Yeah. So, 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 so is this the way it's supposed to work? So rather than uh, listening to your own heart, it gives you the sounds that you should be listening for if uh, if someone has a heart condition. Is that right? Yeah. So it, should, it basically it illustrates a bunch of different. It's a library of it's a library right? of sound clips mostly, yeah. right? Yeah. It's for medical reference purposes, I would say. And based on Google Play ratings, people seem to like it. Uh -huh. um, and that's why we are reviewing it here also. So my, my first reaction looking at this screen is that uh, legibility can be improved a little bit, right? Because, uh, well, you have the dark theme with white text. But I think, you know, especially on the tablet, uh, you can look for opportuni opportunities to increase the font size a little bit to make it more legible. What do you guys think? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can see right away, like, it's it's sort of the the height of each of the list items looks to be about right, but, but right. you've kind of got this small text just tucked away to the, to the left and, and top, really sort of thin. Um, yes, thin yeah, exactly, and especially for the detailed text here. Mm. Hmm, we have some issues with the orientation, but... Um, is it something that can be controlled, or do I need to flip? Okay, no, there you go. You can Great. <laughs> There's nothing I can do. Yeah, it'll work right. right away. But it's uh, completely out yeah. of control. Yeah. It's for the detail view you're saying? Um, yeah, and it basically, when you get into the detail view, it plays back the sound, and it shows you this kind of progress bar. Um, and then touching the screen, I believe, touching... Just swipe it. Oh, double tap. Was it double tap, or...? Um, one of those gestures basically replays it, and it's not 100% discoverable. Right. Um, and you know, when I looked at this last week before we were able to um, actually talk about it, and we ran out of time, um, I did notice a bunch of things here. Just you know, just in terms of basic usability. Um, obviously, you know, on a tablet, the line lengths are really long, and the, the font sizes are small, which we alluded to. But things like you know, uh, basic things like raising the volume of the sound. Right. I mean, I actually found that it was barely, uh, impo uh, mostly impossible to actually hear the sound. Um, and so you may want to try to amplify it so that it's, you know, 
at a default volume, uh, default system volume, you can actually hear what your, you know, what it is. Um, the other thing is, there's a lot of opportunity for visuals, and I know that like sound is, I mean, you, you can't visualize sound, and you know, it's it's not the easiest thing to do. You have to you know show the, the waveforms and whatnot, but it may be something that you know, that you can add. Maybe like. You know, if there's a pulse, like boom, 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 maybe you can sort of like um, illustrate that somehow using a graph, right? Mm -hmm. right? Maybe like show on a timeline, not exactly the, the exact waveform, but kind of like beats, like circles indicating here's where a beat is. Um, and I would even, on a tablet especially, um, put this on the, uh, the listing, the listing of all the sounds, um, just so that you can really easily scan things. So if I'm a doctor, right, and I'm measuring uh, and, and again, I, I am not a doctor, so I have no clue what I'm talking <laughs> imagine about. Imagine you're a doctor. Yeah, imagine like Fred is having some sort of you know issue, and oh. you know I, I measure his heart rate or, or whatever it is. Um, you know I can roughly sense oh there's like three beats happening and they're irregular, and so it'd be really good to be able to just scan that list very right. easily and see hey where are those three beats? Um, say here that's the one that I want, and then go into that and hear the audio. Yeah, that's a great right. idea. I think the visualization there is really important because uh, it's it's going to be quite subtle um, in a lot of times what you're listening to, and seeing the waveform is going to give you that prompt as to what it is you're listening for. So yeah, yeah that's a really it's a really neat trick. I think that tablet's rebooted itself, huh? Right. Yeah. <laughs> <Interesting>. <laughs> right. Switch to the other device. Yeah. No, that's uh, well, it's an interesting it's point actually because it would not install on my uh, on my ICS phone device. So uh, hmm. that's okay. kind of interesting. I mean, having having looked at it here. Uh, I don't see any reason why it shouldn't be uh, available on phones. And in fact, it looked like a, a layout that was sort of optimized for phones more so than tablets. Yeah, um, right. So uh, I would say uh, that to the developer is, uh, you know, check that out. Make sure that you're uh, not limiting your app to, you know, fewer devices than it's capable of right. running on. Uh, actually, I, I verified that on uh, verified that this very same app on a phone, and, and it works. And it works. Yeah, it's yeah. one of the, f the the few apps that have no special permissions. It's a self-contained <laughs> application. No internet permission. No either. internet connection. It's got it's gotten all the sound clips available within mm -hmm. the APK itself, which is kind of cool. Very nice. Yeah. Um, I did want to mention a couple of other things very really quickly, if you guys don't have any other comments. But yeah, um, the launcher icon was extremely dim. Um, and you, apologies that you can't see this, but the uh, the launcher icon was pretty much just like a black background and like some right. very wiry like shape. I think it was in the form of a heart, um, but it was almost impossible to discern what was what was it what it was representing. So I would definitely recommend using kind of like maybe even a non-square launcher icon, maybe one in the shape of a heart. Um, nice. mm. So something like that. Um, also. Uh, yeah, you know, the default hollow theme is fine. I personally prefer uh, the dark action bar theme, hollow mm -hmm. light, dark action bar. Um, that's something that I think always adds like a, a, a nice touch to apps. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, the last bit was on the sound detail screen. Like when you get into the detail screen, you saw that there was like a, there was an action bar with no title, and then there were two fake titles or titles underneath the action bar. Um, I just want to note to everybody that the action bar. Uh, actually supports both a title and a subtitle. Hmm. So, and since the the length of the text wasn't that long, it seems like you could probably represent, um, you know, the title of the screen in the action bar itself. So you have the the sound name at the top as the title, and then under that you have the subtitle, which I think was kind of like a category or kind of like a further smaller description. Right, right. So right. you can easily avoid having two extra UI elements on your screen, um, and then that will leave more space for like the waveform. Perfect. All right. Um, okay, so I think we'll, uh, we'll move on to our next app, um, and we're fortunate enough to have the developer for uh, for this app online as well with us today. So this is uh, Real Colors Pro. Uh, really interesting app. I'm going to uh, I'm going to fire it up here on uh, on the tablet as well. But while while that comes or on the phone, I should say. But while that comes up, um, did you want to tell us a little bit about uh, your app and, and sort of the concept behind it? Yeah, sure. Uh, so we're three guys, and um, basically the app uh, extracts color schemes, color palettes from mm. pictures, from photos, from gallery, from camera. That's what we're basically trying to do, and uh, the goal is for designers to get inspiration from real life, from pictures, from sites. Very nice, very nice. So uh, let's uh, let's switch to the uh, to the phone view here. We can we can have a look at it. And, Straight away, you can see it's a, it's a really nice uh, looking app, um, sort of a really beautiful uh, intro here, which, which I really like. Um, and then you've got your, your actions right here. Now, these aren't standard buttons or anything like that, but I think it's, it's pretty clear straight away that, yep. that they're actionable. 
Um, so we'll try and choose a picture from the gallery uh, on, this, on this photo and see what we have here. Oh, cool, so it's my thing. So I, got some pretty I, got some, I got some pictures here. Mm -hmm. So let's, uh, let's go with this, with this graveyard scene. Oh, that didn't work. Interesting. Something went wrong. So, um, so I have one question uh, for you. Uh, yeah. Is it supposed to work on anything from the gallery? So including things which have to be downloaded or is it just things which are going to be already on the phone? So uh, the problem with gallery is that uh, the new gallery doesn't uh, return a correct URI on all phones. Sometimes it returns on pre 3.0 returns uh, an HTTP address. Gotcha. So we have mm -hmm. to get from the internet. And some uh, on 4.0, some get, uh, some version of gallery returns a correct URI, but some doesn't return, like com.google.android or com.android. So mm. we try to fix most of the to to fix the app. We try to we have like uh, hard coded stuff inside the app, mm. so we can get all the. So basically, the Picasa there are some problems with the Picasa depending on the version of the gallery used. Gotcha. So if you, if you, uh, and this is probably something more for our office hours, but if you get back a URI that starts with content, right, um, and when you que uh, query it, it gives you an error, uh, then that's definitely a bug. We need to fix it. That's, yeah, that's it's, uh, it's on code. That it's on issues. Uh, okay. A lot of people right. commented on it. Okay, we'll have to check that. So, okay, so in the meantime, I'm going to take a photo of, uh, of with our room in here to see if we can get a color scheme. I expect to see some green. To, uh, green, uh, black, and brown. So this is uh, this is a picture of uh, of our hangout room with the uh, the couch, which, uh, which you guys may have seen before. So let's uh, see what kind of color scheme we should. Uh, should probably flip should it into portrait. Yeah, of course, yeah. Sorry, just flip it into portrait mode. This, uh, no, it's nice that it works in landscape. It works in landscape, and That's you can great. switch between portrait and landscape, and it doesn't lose the progress of what it's doing, which is all really nice. Very nice. Uh, so this is kind of the main screen, this is where the magic happens, and again, it's, it's really attractive, it looks really nice. You get this sort of uh, swathe, uh, sort of graph of, of the colours in the scene, um, and sort of the more vivid and more colourful the scene is, obviously, the, the more vivid this graph is. Um, so don't, this isn't the best example, because it's, it's a very sort of plain uh, image that we're taking, right. but you get, you get the idea here, you've got that sort of colour wheel, um, and then each of the colours which exists in the, uh, in the photo. Uh, are represented there. Yeah, I'd say it's a great app for shopping for paint. Absolutely. You are, <laughs> yes. Renovating a room or something. Yeah, yeah. If you want to have a house that looks nice but uh, have absolutely no design skills, it's <laughs> yeah. probably going to be useful. Like me. Yeah, people ask for Pantone support and the route support. Right. Very yeah, nice. Pantone would be yeah, awesome. That's really great. Yeah. 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 So, so again, you can go through here, and so this is real. So this is uh, presenting, I presume, uh, a list of, of colors represented uh, within the image. Is that right? Yes, every, all, by all rules, we get uh, the only colors that are in the image. So real is like uh, our magic sauce, if you want. And uh, the other rules are uh, standard in color theory. Gotcha. Pretty complementary. So yeah, we can go through here and pick like complementary colors to the ones uh, listed in the image. And so these, these are the sorts of things you would use to try and, you know, if it's kind of painting the room. You'd pick something complementary. Right. It's kind of like a Adobe Color uh, ca cooler. Sorry. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So it's like Adobe exactly. Cooler, but taking a real image as a source. Very, very cool idea. Yeah, nice. right. So we've got a whole bunch of different uh, of different options here: shades, uh, split, complementary, a bunch of stuff that I have no idea what the meaning of is, um, but all of which give you these um, sort of range of colors that suit the uh, the scene. And you can kind of click through each of these colors and edit them and modify them to set, sort of customize them exactly the way that you want using you know a bunch of different techniques uh, you know, for color right. modification um, and then there's a couple of nice tips as well here you can create a, a wallpaper using um, using the, the color That's scheme very nice. uh, export it so one of the comments I wanted to make here is, is on the export window um, where it's here it's sort of hard-coded to export to mail mm -hmm. um, it would be nice if this was uh, more of a, a share or a send to um, implementation where you know, you can specify the, the, the message that you want to send and, and which things that you want to attach to it, but then let the user distribute that however they want, whether it's through mail or, or through how, some other app. How do you actually uh, export the color values? You don't, I'm guessing you don't just export hex. Do you like create an image or do you create HTML? It's, a, it's an HTML with uh, nice. beautiful colors and uh, details cool. and the attachments. All the 
So you, one, one thing you may want to consider doing is maybe rendering to a bitmap, saving that as a PNG, and allowing sharing that PNG through whatever service, be it Facebook yeah, or Google+. Yeah, that's Plus or our next right. plan for the next cool. version, to have like a one image that represents everything in one place. Yeah, uh, uh, definitely. Yeah. So what you're doing here is actually sending it, um, sending an email, but not using any of the clients on the device. I, I definitely think about changing that so that you're just packaging up the contents for for an email, which can be sent using either Gmail or uh, you know the, the email app yeah. or whatever else I've got installed. That means you have to have a picture because we couldn't send HTML yeah. with uh, right. standard uh, apps. True. Right. No, that's very true. Um, and so similar along similar lines, if we go. Uh, we go back to the scheme. We've got the share button, and I think right now that that links directly to Facebook. So again, it would be nice if this was just the standard send to intent, so you could send it via Twitter, Facebook, G Plus, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, it would be a lot more flexible. Absolutely, because I have lots of people on Twitter who love my color suggestions, but not so much on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that yeah. We basically need to find because we need to push the images on some server, so we can, uh, if you want to share it with everybody, so they can access it. Not That's why we, we hard coded it with None. Facebook. Like if you want to share for all, with all the apps, what do we send? We need to send a, a, U, a URL, right, to the image. So you basically upload. you basically just have to attach in your action when you fire off action send, right? You basically have to have a content provider, I believe, that uh, allows the uh, the app like Google Plus or Facebook to uh, access your image then that app will take care of uploading it to the server and doing whatever it needs to. So basically, you only have to have a local copy of that PNG, um, and then the app that actually does the sending will take it from, get it from your app using a content provider and then upload it to their servers. Okay, I didn't know that. I thought I need to, okay, I'll check it out. But yes. I think I tried it and for some apps. So they, they upload it themselves? Yeah, they so I mean... Okay. So if you just, if you, uh, the very simplest thing to do, obviously, if you're like Google Plus, right, is to just accept the URL and then show a preview of that URL, and if that URL is an image, then it just shows the image. Uh, but Google Plus, I believe, I, I mean, uh, again, this is up to the app. I'm just thinking of, um, uh, take another one, Dropbox, for example. Mm -hmm. Dropbox is, a, is definitely a case where if you try to give them an image, they're not going to store the URL. They'll actually take the image and upload it into your account. That's one definite example. So right. definitely, yeah. that's definitely going to help you out and give you a lot of flexibility there, which um, which I think is going to be really useful. Um, okay. Otherwise, you know, if we're just talking about the app in general, the look and feel, I, I love the um, the way you've done navigation here. It's it's not uh, the way that we necessarily always suggest um, that we do nav, but I think this looks really good and it's definitely intuitive. Yeah, yeah they're intuitive. The the only kind of navigational issue I had was really the uh, the home button. Uh, I think that should just be an up button to take you back to that home screen. Oh yeah. Um, and the other thing was if you can go back to the home screen for a second. Um, this home screen is uh, is gorgeous. I, I love the custom typeface and everything. Really nice. um, the one thing I would consider doing is uh, adding a little bit more content in here. So, for example, for library, you may want to have kind of the the most recent or the the two most recent uh, color palettes that you've created, just so you can like jump back into them very quickly yeah, without nice. having to go okay. through uh, the gallery and then the library or menu. Yes. Yeah. 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 What one thing we actually wanted to. For the next version, we want to remove the main screen and just move the user directly to library. Mm -hmm. What do you think? And they have the, it, because it's uh, useless. The first screen is not. Yeah, I, I think we, that's you can idea. access everything from the action bar with the camera, and yeah. if you go directly to library, you have access to all those. So it's an interactive splash screen, really. Yeah, right. I mean, <laughs> my suggestion would be like as a first run splash screen. I think it's perfect. It's something which comes up. Yeah. displays your brand in a way that's really appealing and really shows people that you care about design and given that your target audience is designers I think that's really important yeah. um, but I, I think you're right I think the once you've done that first pass once someone so you can remove the library thing because it's only going to be for the first time and so right, right at the beginning you choose between take a picture or choose from the gallery um, to get that workflow and then once you've done that once I think you can skip that entirely and, mm -hmm. and just launch the apps as you say straight into uh, straight into the, the yeah. library chooser right. Um, yeah, uh, I think it's a great workflow. Otherwise, you know, everything's good here. It's, it's customized for, for ice cream sandwich. You've got, I think that's a, is that a custom overflow menu? Is that a pop-up menu rather than an actual overflow menu? Uh, which one? Yeah, when I... Because I, I don't see the... Um, oh, you, of course, you don't see it. So when I, when I, I think it's, the, uh, it's correct. Is it? It's, yeah, it's, it's just uh, the, the selector, like the, the, 
the red hue that um, that happens when you press is mm -hmm. just a it's a themable attribute. Gotcha. I think it actually does look yeah, like a standard. Yeah, it's a 19 too. I see it's right. actually. Oh, cool. All right, then that, that then that's great. So you've yeah. got the overflow menu. You've got uh, the action bar with actions, which is great. Um, you know, the icons, the icons in the action bar look a little dated. You may want to tweak them a little bit to use our new iconography. But oh, okay, okay, cool. But otherwise, otherwise, nice. So I'm, I'm a big fan. I think this is something which we yeah, can go can. ahead and, and suggest to the uh, to the editorial team yep. to maybe take a look at featuring. Was, was there any yeah. other specific feedback that, uh, yeah. that you had? I have one feedback for for this for for the tablet version of this particular screen we have. Um, this our ta tablet just died. I wasn't able to <laughs> revive it. But imagine you, what you're looking at is a stretched screen for tablet, which overall looks very, very nice based on our earlier comments. But for this particular screen, I when I first looked at it, I paid so much attention to the graphics here. Mm -hmm. And then I missed the bottom two buttons. <laughs> right. um, I had to you know, go back to the same screen a couple more times to find it. So maybe you can uh, think of ways, maybe on a bigger screen, make the two uh, buttons on the bottom more visible somehow. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, and just for, for the record, if you uh, choose the, the bottom two, let you switch between the, uh, the image. So this is the colors associated with uh, oh, cool. Fred and Roman as they were uh, preparing for today's uh, review. <laughs> Roman gets all of his strength from bananas, much like Banana Man, for those of you who are old yeah, enough to remember yeah. Banana Man. What is that? <laughs> Something for you to look up in your own time. Is it safe for work? Is it not safe for work? Who can say? Let's Google it. Who can say? No one knows. Um, yeah, so awesome. Thank you, uh, thank you for, for nominating your app. It was, uh, it was a real pleasure to look at. Yeah, great work. But, um, yeah, we'll, we'll send you some notes um, just to summarize some of the suggestions that we had afterwards, but uh, we'll cool. definitely be putting it forward. And, Hopefully, uh, we can see it um, featured somewhere in uh, Google Play. Great, thanks. Great. Thanks Thanks for joining us. Brilliant. Okay, so uh, that was fun. Uh, let's have a look. What have we got up next? It's a uh, notification agenda, I think, is the, uh, the next app that we're going to take a look at. Um, so I'm going to exit out of here and fire that up. So this is, uh, this is a notification agenda um, that we've got on the, uh, on the phone screen here as well. <coughs> Or at least we will soon. Uh, in the meantime, um, did you guys have uh, have any? Yeah, here we are. Perfect. Let me just. What were you going to ask? I was going to ask uh, what you guys thought of it. So uh, maybe I should give a bit of uh, feedback first on what the app is. That makes sure. sense. All right. So uh, what this is is basically a, a, a task list, uh, as much as as, as far as right. I can tell. Mm -hmm. um, but its sort of claim to fame, its uniqueness here is that um, every time you add a, a note to your agenda, you can make it become persistent in your notification tray. Um, so let me just get rid of this one. So you can see here that uh, test two has come up. Um, and if I, so you can see on the right hand side, we've got this little uh, visibility icon. Now, one of my pieces of feedback here is that this touch target is way too small and impossible to press. So I'm gonna try and use the very <laughs> smallest part of my, yes, of my pinky. Uh, and you'll see it's, it's now added that note to my notification tray. And then you can you know, toggle that and it will be added and removed. Oh, that's a touch target. That is a touch target. Right. One is, thing, uh, there was an touch. impossible to touch touch target, but a touch target nonetheless. Can I make a note on that? Please. So um, I actually had a, a, a Google Plus post on this exact problem uh, a while ago, maybe like several months ago. I remember this, yeah. And it was about touch delegates. Uh, basically the idea is that anytime you have a list item with inner targets, like that tiny little eye there, um, you want to make sure that your touch zones are as simple and like as big as possible. So in this case, um, and I'm just going to very summar briefly summarize what's the problem. Sure. Um, in this case, basically if you touch above or below that, uh, that eye, you end up touching the list item. So what you want to do is you want to kind of simplify the zone so that the left side of the list item is basically the um, the list item itself, mm -hmm. and the right side, at least 48 dips in width, and the full height of that list item yeah. um, is that secondary target. Yeah, because it's um, pretty much a zero percent chance that someone's going to try and hit the list item just above or to the right hand right. side of that that yeah. eye, huh? And in case you can't make your view the full height uh, of the list item, you can use something called the touch delegate to basically say, you know, when you touch the the this location on the parent view, then actually send that touch to the secondary view. Mm -hmm. So it's just a, a secondary way of doing that. Yeah, and it's a, it's a really good example of when this is the, the right approach because this, this looks good here, having the, um, the little eye, I don't think you'd really want that to, to take up the full list because mm -hmm. it would kind of be cramped and it would hit the one below and above. Um, so having it inset I think is the right approach, but um, yeah, you definitely want to make sure that that's touchable because otherwise you do what I just did there, which is click it and it registers yeah. as a mm -hmm. list view click. Um, 
So this is this is the note view. Um, you know, so just to, to finish off sort of the, the details, we've got a view page uh, effect here so that you can click across and choose your icon and, and go back and, and edit the notes. And that's that's all nice. Overall UI look and feel is, is reasonable. Um, you've got this sort of action bar like uh, effect up the top. I don't know that's an actual action bar, but it, it looks like one. No, so it's not. It's not. It's not really an action bar. No. Yeah, it's yeah, it, it looks compatibility like one, and it, it acts like one. So to a to a certain degree, that's that's mm -hmm. a reasonable approach. But I think Roman's got some more detailed comments about yeah. this. Um, <laughs> so yeah, maybe you want to you want to kick off because that's that's the functionality, right? It's it's notes. Yeah and they uh, persist in the, in the notification tray. So the, I mean, a lot of the comments that I had were around the action bar. So the first, the first issue is that you have this up icon in the top left, um, but it's, it's really, it shows the home iconography um, and the up iconography. So that's a little confusing. So um, basically you never want something that's both home and up. It, it really should be either home or up. And, and in general, you should prefer up since that's kind of the formalized pattern. Um, and so for up, you basically just show your app icon, and that's a, it's a way to introduce branding into the app, um, and kind of the little left carrot. Um, the other issue is that on the, on the home screen, uh, the, that top left area is actually the overflow. Yeah, let's, so let's go back to the, uh, to the phone layout, and, uh, and we can see this quite, quite clearly here. So we've got this sort of traditional action bar with the, the actions over here on the right with the refresh and, and create new. And, Actually, I just want to point out that the create new icon over here is actually looks a lot like an edit icon. Mm, um, yeah. So you may want to consider replacing that with sort of the, the thin plus symbol, which yeah. I think is, is, is more the, the style. And what Roman's referring to over here is, is the app icon. So I think to, to go back to what you were saying before, this, this, is, this should be consistent, right? That should always be that icon and then either with the back or up carrot um, or not. Right? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be that icon. It, it should yeah. be some sort of iconography or a logo sure. or nothing at all. But definitely the, the home icon, like having the, the home uh, button, uh, that's, that's kind of deprecated. You should no longer use that. Okay, so, um, but, so, so here's the really interesting thing is that so, you know, as an Android user, uh, I think what we all expect is that if you hit something with a drop down on this side, it's going to be navigation, like yeah. in mm -hmm. Gmail right. when you choose between your inboxes or labels. And here, it's it's actually the overflow menu, um, which it's was a little... It's quite innovative. What? <laughs> it reminds me of uh, <laughs> Mac OS X, right? Oh, you touch yeah, yeah, the, course, the Apple and it gives you the system preferences. That's, yeah. It's very strange on Android. I've, I've seen people <laughs> duplicating iPhone OS paradigms on Android, never before Mac OS, no. that I think is new. Mm -hmm. um, so this is just confusing. Um, bottom line, it's, it, you're not expecting an overflow menu here. It means that it's either completely undiscoverable or completely unintuitive. Um, so it's, it's fine to have these things, but they should totally be on an overflow menu. Uh, over here on the uh, the far right hand side. Yeah, having the, inc the consistency would be pretty important. Yeah, I mean, for, users. So for these sorts of things, it's like this is the, no user is ever going to expect this, and, and where they when they are looking for settings, they're going to be expecting them over on on this side. So that's that's kind of a must fix uh, straight away. Um, Get on it. <laughs> I, I did have uh, so. Two more, well, actually one more general thing is when you get into the, the edit or the detail view, mm -hmm. um, there are one, two, three, four different ways in which you can accept <laughs> or cancel. Uh, basically, if you, if you press back, it cancels. If you press up, it also cancels. If you press the X, it also cancels. Okay. The only way to actually save is to press the checkbox. Interesting. So right. what you should do is you should simplify this. So um, in general, uh, you don't want users to lose progress, right? Mm -hmm. So if I just typed out, and I know this is for a notification, so it's probably a very short note, but if I just typed out something fairly important, like a phone number or an ID or something that I have to remember, pressing back should not just cancel it. Mm, right. It should probably save it and just automatically assume that the user meant to press OK. Mm -hmm. um, or, you know, if you absolutely have to, then show a dialogue saying, actually, do you want to save or not? But what it does now is, is the incorrect behavior, I think, is that um, you know, it actually just discards. Right. Um, I, I think the, the first option you mentioned is the preferred way, in yeah. my opinion. Yeah, like, like the Gmail behavior, right? When you're composing an, ad, uh, an email, when you press back, it automatically saves your email message in yeah. progress into draft. Yeah, it, particularly because I think it, it kind of implies, I, I don't know how it works behind mm -hmm. the scenes, but it implies that if, uh, you know, if I'm typing away something detailed here and then I get an incoming phone call and then that comes mm -hmm. up right. and I do something else and the app gets killed sometime in the background, yeah. right. you know, I'm not convinced here that when I start it up, it's going to be saved. Right. That's right. And I, I think you know you make make a good point. There's three ways to not save your information, and only one way to save it. 
kind of implies that not saving your information is, is more important than saving it. Yeah. I can't think of any situations where that's likely the case. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you want to switch that priority around. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm having a, a vision of, of Jens from the UI team um, telling me something along the lines of not even needing to have an X button. It's basically yeah. just a, a tick and you press that and it, and it goes back. Uh, mm -hmm. And there's a way to do that with the action bar, is that right? So uh, what do you mean by tick? There's like a like an accept. There's a, a way to say oh. that um, you know I'm happy with this edit. Yeah. So so um, the top left in, in some of our apps, we actually have the top left as a, a checkbox and done. Mm -hmm. um, and you can you can't do that uh, using like by just simply saying oh do that. Mm -hmm. um, you have to provide I think a custom view. Um, and but it's it's easier to probably grab it from the open source project mm -hmm. and do it. But basically, the top left, you don't even need the icon or an up button. It could just be done, checkbox done. Nice. Um, and then the top right, having something like discard, like yes. the text right. discard. Yeah, and, and then that's, that's a nice effect because then it's, you're basically saying like you know this is just a temporary modal scenario where you want to do something and then just hit and, and go back to where you're from. It's minimizing the number of different ways to interact with that particular screen, right? Yeah, basically, if I've gotten to the screen, I've already made the conscious decision to save something. Yeah. So that should be the default kind of uh, the default expectation is that the user actually wants to save what they're writing, right? Yeah. So, so you have to make the assumption that the user would have to consciously cancel it, yeah. then yeah. you cancel yeah. it. Yeah. Right? It's like, oh, I've made this worse than it was. <laughs> yes. Make it go away. Okay, nice. Now, um, I know there was a couple of interesting things to do, I think, with the action bar that, um, that I think you guys noticed before uh, when we were taking a look at the app. Am I remembering correctly? Uh, besides, so I think I think I mentioned all the things that I th uh, I noticed. Um, I thought there was a way that you could. Uh, oh no, that's a different. That's I'm um, thinking of a different. Different app. app. Yeah, different app. We'll come to that. Yeah. So it also has a green action bar. Doesn't yes, it? that's right. confusing. <laughs> <laughs> Two notes apps, same action bar color. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Oh, okay. So, so I have uh, one more yeah. suggestion is that you know when you're in edit mode, uh, you know you, this is the text screen where you can input some information and swipe right and you pick an icon when you go back. Ideally, I like to see the selected icon oh, mm -hmm. displayed cool. somewhere yeah. here to give me an indication that okay, this is the icon that's going to be displayed next to the notification. Something. Um, almost like a preview, yeah. right? Almost like yeah. a preview below it. Showing yeah, because yeah. Well, yeah, the notification takes a, a known amount of space, which isn't right. that significant. So yeah, that, that would be a great suggestion, idea. especially you know on the tablet, which used to be running. Uh, <laughs> when I first tested it on a tablet, you know, imagine right. again what you're looking at here is an expanded screen. You have a lot of white space, and this de developer, um, you, you probably should look into increasing the side margins a little bit to make it look. Visually nicer. Yeah. I'm sure Roman sure. has more. For sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the the padding for <laughs> sure. Uh, <laughs> open up a can of worms. Um, the padding for sure. Something you could do with the the titles is. Uh, I think we mentioned this in the hangout office hours, but a right. uh, neat thing to do is just uh, use the list separator text view style as the mm -hmm. heading, um, and then completely remove completely remove the. Uh, the background on the text fields themselves, so the, the text field effectively becomes just an open area, of, like inviting you to type content, um, and then you apply the kind of the border to indicate the different regions on the headers, not on the text field. Oh, nice. um, so yeah, so overall, I think it's it's definitely an app with potential. It's it's kind of a very simple idea, um, but if it's it's kind of a good way of being able to put things in a place which is visible. What one one little bit of feedback that I did have in terms of functionality is uh, I thought it would be nice once you've got these notifications here um, to be able to dismiss these. So these aren't dismissible as you can see by the fact that they're bouncing back. Um, but if I could dismiss this and then it would just toggle that visibility flag mm -hmm, in the app, mm -hmm. I think that would be kind of a, a neat mm -hmm. thing because uh, I could see this would be a much more convenient shopping list app for me than a lot yeah, of things. Yeah, swipe, got the milk, got yeah. the cheese. Exactly, yeah. bang, swipe, and then mm -hmm. I don't have to navigate through an app or any of that time consuming to keep the little boxes just bang, 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 bang. Mm -hmm. um, so that, to me, would actually make this uh, really useful. And I think you can specify in the notifications framework a, a dismiss intent so mm -hmm. that when it gets dismissed, you can actually go ahead and disable it so you don't have to like kind of have a sync or anything you just oh, get cool. a notification or an event rather when when it gets dismissed yeah exactly so that would be, that would be my big tip um, so I would say you know think think about that the main thing I think here is is around some of the UI elements I think tidy them up and, and you're gonna have something which is uh, a lot more intuitive for people to use mm -hmm. absolutely cool any other comments should we move on no. let's move on all right brilliant um, so this is the other app that I was thinking of uh, G notes G notes Let's uh, let's take oh, our so G notes with a green um, theme. Green theme, yes, exactly. So, all right. See, now this, I can see why I was confused. This is a similar similar sort of theme going yeah, on here with the, uh, the pseudo action bar uh, sort mm -hmm. of scenario. Mm -hmm. 
Um, yeah, why don't, uh, why don't you guys tell, tell us a, a little bit about this app? What did you What did you think? What were your thoughts? So again, it's just it's notes, right? Different different way of collecting notes. It's notes. Um, I think that the, I mean for me. I'm a UI guy. I sometimes just get blinded by by <laughs> pixels, and I don't actually see what the app does. Um, <laughs> but the one thing I really noticed that I, that I did like in this notes app is that there are a lot of ways to take notes. Right? Mm -hmm. um, you can you know you can capture audio. You can uh, take a photo with your camera, um, and whatever. And everybody has a different way of taking notes. Right? Um, so like I personally just do text. Some people do voice notes and things like that. Mm -hmm. So what this app does really well is it actually lets you customize the, the action bar. Um, and if you, if you touch the top right, you see kind of all the different ways of taking a note. Mm -hmm. You can actually drag one of those items into the action bar. Um, That's a pretty to, cool feature. Yeah, yeah, to make it a conscious, like kind this of, uh, nice. you're telling the app, this is how I like to take notes, right? So that, that ability to personalize and customize is really cool. Right. What happens if you drag, try to drag more icons? It doesn't accept it. Well, let's have a look. Uh, yeah, I'm curious. No, it uh, doesn't. They, no. So you have to it drag just, them. Uh, just yeah. replaces the one that oh, you cool. drop it on top of. Mm -hmm. So you get uh, up to three at a time. That's pretty innovative stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I quite like that. Yeah, yeah and, and it's it's probably almost certainly using a custom action bar, which in this case, I mean, um, what I would do is if I were doing this, I would use the standard action bar, but I would have a um, a custom action view mm. uh, that was kind of wide enough to take two or three icons uh, that would act as the drop target and not kind of rewrite the entire action bar just. That. Yeah, that's a good point because you can you can have that custom uh, custom action view which has all of the functionality included transparent background so that it just sits yeah. on top. Mm -hmm. That would be nice. Um, but yeah, it's definitely definitely useful functionality. Um, so again, you can take a photo, Let's picture notes. Let's go this way instead. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's beautiful, right? All right. So that's what Roman looks like without the fancy processing we're doing on the back end. <laughs> Ah, uh, right now. <laughs> Let's go back into portrait mode. Uh, so it's nice to see uh, that this and most of the apps we've looked at today are all work really well in landscape and portrait mode, which is which is awesome. Um, so that's that's a note of Roman in his beautiful glory. Um, and we can add additional context here, Roman. Um, so this app is a good example, which takes exactly the opposite approach to uh, the one we were looking at beforehand, where I don't think that there is a way to cancel what you're doing. You basically just go back. Yeah. Um, now, I have to say that um, because it's not always clear, like some apps don't save everything, I'm kind of looking on the screen here for a way to confirm that I want to save this note, I don't want to lose it, and all I get is uh, two back buttons. Um, so that kind of breaks another rule of having an on-screen back button. Yes. Yeah. You don't need to. Um, right. So what I would suggest here is actually really simple: is just turn that into a into a tick, into an accept, mm -hmm. um, right. mm -hmm. and then you kind of you've got exactly the same functionality as you're doing now, but it's a little more obvious to, yeah. to me what, yeah. what this is going to. You be know, like. the difference between and we we as, as, when we first introduced up, people were like, "That's back." <laughs> right, and it is very so. It's it's different. It's for sure different. We have you know documentation in the navigation section of Android Design on this, but um, sometimes to a user, the difference can actually be an iconography. Right, mm. that icon looks mm. like back. Mm. The the up icon, it, it's a left carrot. But we're you know users are trained uh, over the course of using their device. They're trained to, to understand that that left carrot and that those exact angles and that exact width mm. that actually represents something else besides back. And it's it's almost subtle. It's not you know if you ask a user oh what is that they'll say back, mm. but they know that it behaves differently. Yeah. And so when you when you start introducing iconography that that is counter that their expectations change. Right. Yeah, and that's I mean that's something which uh, we get asked about a lot. Like you know should should every app look exactly the same as specified in the guidelines? Is there you know room for for divergence there? And there absolutely is. Um, the key is really just to make sure that user expectations are, are met, um, so that when you're pressing something, you have a really high degree of confidence that it's going to do what you want it to do. Um, so I think that's that's kind of the key. Right. Um, and uh, the other thing I would like to point out is that uh, not only does this does this app have a soft back button on the screen that we just saw, and I, and I believe if you look into the settings, settings, uh, uh, setup, setup actually, oh, uh, so no, menu settings, go back. Go back. There's an, an basically there's another style of back button. Oh, I see. It's, it's a different style, but I can't for some reason I can't. It's, oh, so the, the collapse this expand back. button. Yeah, this this oh. guy, this back button. Oh here. god. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, so two strikes. <laughs> not only do you have a soft yeah, back button. Sorry, let's, let's put that there. Yeah, you don't want you don't you want have, an actual back button. That's not pretty. You also have an actual back button that's next to 
the hard back button. Yes. Let's All right. Away. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's unfortunate. Um, <laughs> let's see the other the other interesting comments. So this goes along the same lines lines of confusing iconography. So up here we've got. What well, looks, and it's, it's pretty small on screen here, so even at 720, I don't know that you guys are going to see what that is, but it's it's sort of the app icon, and it's got a tiny little left triangle next to it. Um, and so that looks like a, it should be up, right? Yeah. But it isn't. It's it's collapse, which actually makes more sense um, in this context as to what it is. But that was totally opaque to me. I had no idea what that was going to do. Um, do you have suggestions as to a better way to sort of display yeah. that, that kind of function? Um, so the... The closest pattern to this, I'd say, is is something that we see more on tablets and portrait. Um, this is the uh, so if you go to Android Design again and you go to uh, multi pane layouts, there's a section that talks about orientation change. Mm -hmm. So how to deal with fragments specifically on uh, portrait and landscape. Right? You know, making sure that you have the same functionality across both. Um, and in this case, you don't have two fragments. You really just have a kind of alternative navigation along the left side. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I don't think that. You know, it, it makes too much sense to have this. Um, you may be able to do the same exact thing by offering kind of left and right swipe or or even a drop down in the action bar. But if you absolutely positively have to stick with something like this, what I'd make sure to do is follow the the kind of that pattern on tablet. Um, basically, the idea is that that up button is always up. If you press it, um, if you press it, and the that left pane is not visible. Um, then it shows the left pane, and it should mm. probably slide in to indicate kind of <laughs> that. Nice. Yeah. Um, but then, when you if you press it again, it shouldn't collapse it. You should basically just be going up the hierarchy, not kind of uh, toggling Toggle hierarchy. Between. Yeah. Um, so that's one thing I recommend. But again, I think the basic recommendation here is I think not to use this kind of side pane. First of all, on a, on a phone and portrait, it limits your horizontal space, which is just in general not a good mm -hmm. thing to do. Yeah. And I think there are just other ways to do this that, that achieve the same result. How yeah. does it look in landscape? Let's have a look. Have a quick look. I, mean, I was going to say as well, uh, along the same lines, that uh, you know, an alternative to that is to basically have the... That's mm -hmm. it. makes a little bit more sense in, in landscape, having that kind yeah. of way, yeah. because you've got the extra horizontal mm -hmm. width. Mm -hmm. But um, one thing which you might want to consider as an alternative is to use sort of the more standard action bar navigation, uh, very similar to what Gmail does. Uh, where you have a, a drop down here which lets you select uh, which of the books that you want to have. Mm -hmm. um, so Gmail does this really well with labels and with accounts. Um, so that's probably the approach that I would mm -hmm. take. Mm -hmm. uh, another comment here, just generally, the, uh, the cog here implies settings. What it kind of really is, is the ability to um, either add a new book or, or modify the existing ones. That's not mm. entirely intuitive yeah. to me, the way that right. works. Um, I'd consider sort of simplifying this so the cog becomes a plus sign and all you do there is create a new book and that should probably be a, an action or something along those yeah. lines. And then right. edit could perhaps be a, a settings menu thing. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't want to go into too much detail there, but it just generally speaking, I think it's a little bit of a confusing one. The last bit is that there's a legacy menu button there. There is. Oh, so the same that should be a screen. Yeah. 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 Um, so it actually, yeah, it does stuff, which means it's not technically a button of shame. Right, which is good, um, but yeah, you you want to you can really easily change this into an overflow menu and yeah. get the same functionality. There you go. So I would mm -hmm. I would do that. Um, I did like uh, they've got some nice drag and drop action here, so you, oh, you cool. can probably yeah. see they've actually got a thumbnail here, uh, and you can drag it down to the uh, to the bin to delete it. That's cool. Interestingly, the uh, the bin graphics uh, look a little uh, grainy, like uh, it's too it's too small. It's just been pulled mm -hmm. up. Um, so yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing it's been borrowed from somewhere in the uh, the framework and there's just mm -hmm. no uh, HDPI or HDPI assets for it. Um, so again, I yeah. think about maybe, in fact, it's just a rounded rectangle with an icon in it. So you may be able to do something using a, a, a drawable, a shape drawable uh, mm -hmm. to achieve that in a scalable way. Um, okay, any other comments on that one? That, that covers it. I think the the one really cool thing is, that, I mean, the dragging in here is, is well done. I, I think yeah. there are some some like flickering issues, or whatever, but the dragging overall, it's a cool concept. Absolutely, right. absolutely. Um, all right, so I think that takes us to uh, to just about forty five past. So I, I think rather than uh, look at the next two apps, we'll we'll hold them off for, for next week or next time. Um, so um, yeah, so that that should pretty much wrap us up. Um, do stay tuned. Uh, we've got um, Ian Lewis and Dan Galpin. Ian is uh, currently acting as our producer behind the scenes. Uh, he will be coming to front of camera, where he belongs, to uh, to host the, uh, the Friday Review Games Edition. Uh, so that'll be up in just 15 minutes. 
Uh, like we mentioned earlier, all of the assets we look at here are self-nominated by their creators for us to take a look at. Um, we'll be sending them some additional feedback um, after we're finished here. If you would like to have your app reviewed by us, um, there is a moderator page which you can get at the uh, Android Developers Google Plus page at developer.android.com slash plus. Uh, we'll be sure to, uh, to post that there along with the uh, video from this session so uh, we can check out your apps. Uh, thank you very much for everyone who did nominate this week, uh, particular, uh, particularly the developer of, of uh, Real Colors Pro, both for creating an awesome app and for joining us on the show to tell us. Yeah, about good stuff, time. good stuff. Cool. All right, so uh, thank you guys for joining me. I hope that uh, I'll see you next week. And... Um, <laughs> it's a long way. From it's a long way. From no, from come on. Yeah, yeah, you got a full <laughs> hour to get. Man, I don't know how you do it. Well, thank you again. Um, so in the meantime, until we see you all next week. All right. Thank you for joining. See us. you. Peace out, guys.